Yo, this hot, this the spot, there it is, pod.com. We're interviewing the best comedians, so tune in quick and get your ears receiving them. We're talking about life and life to stream right to you from the microphone right to your home, dude. Side note, this might get embarrassing, but no, don't sweat, yo, because there it is. Welcome to the There It Is podcast, a comedy podcast to help you find your inspiration. I'm your host, Jason Farr. Let's do this. Happy Halloween and thanks for joining us for a spooky, scary episode. It is a pop talk. We talk about horror movie villains. But first, a little bit of business. Big thanks to Clayton Smith and Jason Rivetuso. I hope I pronounced your name right, fellow Jason. Thank you all so much for your support of the podcast. It is greatly appreciated. If you want to be like Clayton and Jason and support the podcast, you can go to thereitispod.com for a newsletter and support info. Helps us keep the lights on. All right, on to today's episode. As I mentioned, it is a horror movie villains episode, but we are doing a bracket of horror movie villains and it's super fun we talked to brother of the show trey best friend of the show rob and wife of the show justina we have a really fun and haunting chat about horror movies and villains and more let's get right to it here's my chat with the of the show gang welcome back for a very spooky of the show gang episode we've got best friend of the show rob Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is I once again, Vincent Price, suckling on the teat of the <laughs> evening that is Hallow's Eve, for she is supple and lovely. And oh, so, what? no, no, I didn't park there. Mm. It's du- it's not double park. That's a park. I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> God damn, Raven. <laughs> <laughs> and a brother of the show, Trey. He's gone. He's gone from here. The evil is gone. And wife of the show, Justina. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. Oh, what a smash. I have no opening. I could, I <laughs> that was good enough. Okay, thank, thank you. <laughs> when you got a bit, you got to stick with it. Okay, guys. I'm oh, stick sorry, with I didn't it. commit. Yeah. I'm sorry for Just not committing. Commit. The scariest thing is not committing. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess if I were going to do one, it would be Bustin makes me feel good. No, <laughs> I like how he was like, I am not going to say Ghostbuster in the song, but I will definitely say Bustin makes me feel good. <laughs> uh, so I saw, I don't, I think I told you all, but I didn't say it on the podcast. I did watch on the plane from Japan, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, you and, did not tell um, us. One thing they did in that is they essentially made that song canon in the universe <laughs> there's a scene when paul rudd references it and sings it so now that moment is just a part of the movie <laughs> it's just a, like a real part of the world it's unclear whether the cartoon is canon or not it was intended like they they shot they made the cartoon as though the movie was canon and then when part two came out they adjusted the cartoon accordingly but they implied in the cartoon that at the end, when they were kind of doing the little, actually, it's not the end of the movie. It's just from the the music video where they're doing the two step with. Yeah, Ray they Parker. showed that in the movie. Yeah, they showed that in the cartoon, <laughs> and they make it sound like the song was playing while they were doing that, like after they defeated Gozer in part one. So it just kind of seemed like the cartoon was trying to make it canon. I believe that universe is caving in on itself. It's an anomaly <laughs> yeah. and it's going to get solved. That, yeah. yeah. They, if they really wanted to make the cartoon canon, they should have given Egon brown, dark brown hair. Like, yeah. That, that yeah. Was why did they make him section. blonde? <laughs> yeah. I don't like, know. I, I, I hadn't. That has I re- to be some sort of network note of like, it'll do better with kids if he's blonde. <laughs> like, yeah. There's yeah. actually a flashback episode of the cartoon to how Slimer became part of the group. And it was right after the movie, because, you know, in the movie, everything burst out of the the trap. 
And so yeah. Slimer was one of them. And so when they got back after defeating Gozer, Slimer was just hanging out in the firehouse. And they're like, get him. That's the one who slimed me at the hotel. And somehow, I don't remember the details, but somehow that turned into Slimer being like their mascot. Their friend and pal. All right. Well, I don't know why you know all of that information. You know a lot about. I, I, I only watched re- it as a kid. I don't know. Why I watched I it as a kid, but I I actually rewatched a little bit of it because we got like the real oh. Ghostbusters. We got it on DVD from the oh. library. Once again, Hennepin County Library. I'll mention you every week, guys. Mm. Yeah, and I was actually one of the episodes was kind of scary. It had to do with like basically like the boogeyman. And it was like, Luke was like, he was a couple of years. It was probably like when he was six and he was not feeling it. He was mm. getting a little nervous. I got up it. way too early because it was like something they were showing at like 5, 6 a.m. for some reason on weekdays. What? Mm. And I was getting up super early and watching it when That's I was still commitment. living in Raleigh. That is yeah. commitment to IP. That yeah, is I, commitment I, to IP. I, I didn't know you. I didn't remember you doing that. I just remember us getting up on Saturday did you morning know? for the original broadcast. How did you know? Were you like looking at TV guide? I, my, my... <laughs> recollection is that trey told me that sounds about right and Considering he's, like he's like our four leading ready. expert on the real ghostbusters <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah but today we do have a horror movie villains bracket that we're going to talk about but first before we hop into that i do want to just say i did not expect joker 2 to do so poorly at the box office like i didn't think it was going to do nearly as well as the first one but it is bombing hard. Hard. Oh, you know what? It's it's a small price to pay. <laughs> because what we're getting in return is the greatest Lady Gaga song in <laughs> Justina does love this song. Years. It's <laughs> so good. And I haven't her performance heard it yet. is so good. I, I've heard that like she doesn't even get to sing like Lady Gaga in the movie. Like she doesn't do anything. She's like almost like doesn't sing that well in the movie like it's well, like on purpose not like she yes, like it's char- like a character, the character choice. like the character yeah like she good. doesn't get to sing like lady so like why do you have lady gaga in your movie mm-hmm. and not let her oh, and then there are all those articles to- <laughs> wow Pitch perfect, lady gaga. <laughs> there, <laughs> there are also all those articles of joaquin phoenix saying he just wanted to get the notes right and was so like so worried about the singing because it's Lady Gaga that he's singing with. So it's interesting if... Even if, though she's not supposed to be singing. If that's both. the case, then that's Well, I mean, from bizarre. what I understand, like, I don't think she really does, like... And it, like, I thought they were doing a lot of, like, the... She, you know, she does a lot of, like, jazz standards, like, standards like she did with, like, mm-hmm. Tony Bennett. I thought they were going to be doing that, but I... Again, I, I heard seen, it was a jukebox musical. It's supposed to be a jukebox musical, but it's, like... I don't think she really, like, did the Lady Gaga does like the jazz thing so i don't i could be wrong but that's what i that's what i heard and read here's all i'll say lady gaga's performance of happy mistake on jimmy kimmel Mm -hmm. obligatory watching and everybody's Mm -hmm. saying this so i'm not like speaking like Mm -hmm. you know anything new you know but it's so freaking good i cannot recommend it enough so she's great she's great and i you know i i enjoyed a star is born and i enjoyed house of gucci because i'm like trash but yeah yeah, i respect ridley scott so but no i like this from everything it's heard it's just like and like i text you guys it's just like dark and miserable and no Mm -hmm. one likes it on rotten tomatoes both the critics and audiences had it in the low 30 i think he like like a spoiler but i don't think anybody cares i from what i understand like I think he like doesn't end up with her. He like gets stabbed. He's like miserable. Like he's mean to like other people that like try to help him. Like he's just like there's nothing redeeming about right. him. There's nothing like enjoyable about it. That was the main complaint yeah. I heard was no yeah. one in the movie had anything redeemable. Yeah, it's like whereas no- in the first movie you at least understood why he was yeah descending like, into that break that he he, yeah. he went into. But it just it just feels like. Taxi Driver did it better. The King yeah. of Comedy did it better. Uh-huh. Like they just, and then like, and then like, I, I read somewhere else where like, well, this really isn't like a Joker movie. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's well, what they said about the first call one too. Though. It that. Don't call it that then. Yeah. You know, he, like. He, yeah. He took the first one. Phillips did, did did the first one as an excuse 
to do an art house movie, but use the IP to be able to do something that broader audiences would be interested in. So I guess he just went deeper yeah. down that rabbit I hole. I think, I think like, I think even like they make Two Face in the movie, there's like an explosion. They do. Yeah. I think I that, you know, so it's like, don't tell me that it's not a Joker movie. It just, it w- didn't work. How are you going to make Two Face years before Bruce Wayne's going to be Batman? How are you going to just... make it just any of it? It doesn't make any sense. It's like, that's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, is he, and then bad. like, think about like, because Joaquin's like, what, 50? Right? Like, ish. Uh, yeah. Ish. So it's like, so and Bruce Wayne in the movie was still like, preteen so we're yeah. gonna say like let's just give him like 15 20 years to be batman so he's like like in his 70s yeah close to his 70s like <laughs> yeah. and he's doing this joker shit it's like i mean i don't know nah it's not i a, think one of the ideas know. with the first movie was maybe that joaquin phoenix was going to inspire the person who would become bruce wayne's nemesis oh yeah well well know. spoiler <laughs> that's kind of what people think the ending is Oh, that he inspires somebody to be. Yeah, it's all it's that's, all wrapped that's up like that. Dumb. It's, it's like it it it's. I've never seen a movie drop eighty one percent going I mean, into I its have. second weekend, and like and that's after it bombed in the first place, and it yeah. did not lose any theaters in its second weekend. Oh, that mm. hurts. That's yeah. what's so bizarre. I, I, we went and saw Wild Robot on Friday night. It was really good. It was, I can't wait to it see it. It was really good. Did you cry, uh, Rob? Yeah, of course I cried. Okay, yeah, no shit. Like, yeah, of course I'm like bawling at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. But I, it was really, but they had a huge showing of Terrifier 3, which I've never seen any, as much as I love horror movies. I've, I've never watched ter- any of the Terrifier films. I don't even know about them. Yeah. I heard about them, but forgot it, until I saw there was yeah. a third one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think they've been, they've like are making money like because it's like they've made the first ones really cheap. They're and, making making their money back on Shutter. Uh, oh yeah, oh easily, easily. So, but yeah, I think there was a showing of that that was pretty popular. There was still like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice stuff up. I mean, that's still doing fairly well. But I don't, I didn't really see like. I think they maybe had one screening of Joker two and like or Funny yeah. two. And this is the other thing too. This is just my thing. But stop with trying to make your sequel sound cool. You know it was a good sequel? Godfather Part 2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it wasn't afraid to be Godfather Part 2, bitches. So <laughs> if you're making a Part 2, just call it 2. Yeah, You're sounding like the Red Letter Media guys now. I, I don't have I didn't a even know they that, Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they've, so, they've complained yeah, about that yeah. a few times, particularly Marvel movies, because it's like Captain America, mm. the Winter Soldier, Captain America, Civil War, mm. et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like comic books are different. Oh, and shit. Also, I guess it's like, Civil but this War isn't a comic sense. book movie. No. Yeah. Like, it's more like this is what it is. Like, because they still did, like, well, no, I guess Age of Ultron. Well, I did not. I mean, f- yeah. I, I did not like yeah. the name immediately when I saw Joker. And it's like, you should have said, called it Joker 2. But then when I heard it was a musical, I was like, I don't have. Well, they should have just called it too Joker pretentious of, too, Yeah, it was too <laughs> pretentious sounding of a name to me. I can yeah. understand the title. So I'm not actually going to go down that road because maybe because I watched too much Law and Order Criminal Intent. <laughs> but there was an episode where these two characters had folio do. And so I understood like mm. that's the connection. So the two characters, Joker and Lady Gaga, are suffering from folio do. Sure. So well, I, my problem know, I was more how pretentious it is <laughs> to do this movie. It feels also, really pretentious. Also, like, dude, I have a lot of respect actually for Todd Phillips. I do, but let's just not forget that you had you had Horatio Sands take a piece of of French toast and put it in his pants in a movie and <laughs> fart on it and then serve it to DJ Qualls. Don't act like you're some highbrow person. <laughs> You had, you, you know, I mean, yeah. oh, we've it's seen your good. movies. It's good. It's good. <laughs> like, like, don't act like we've all seen The Hangover, okay? Like, don't, you are, don't, And he bro. did The Hangover 2 and Hangover 3. He didn't call yeah. it Hangover. Hangover, <laughs> yeah, Hangover. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> that would probably made Hangover 2 better, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm just surprised. And not in a gleeful, yay, this movie no. did bad sort of way just in a i couldn't believe it like usually when i see a movie drop 60 percent, it's because it was a marvel movie that made 500 million dollars its first weekend or you know some crazy i guess you you can almost not you you can't retain that much yeah when you do that well the first weekend they made 
under projections the first yeah. weekend of Joker and they didn't even retain half like that. Like the, the word of mouth of the movie is so abysmal. Yeah. And, and I was surprised. Like I really was like, yeah, I'm not hearing anyone talk about it and it doesn't look great. And there isn't a buzz. So I don't think it's going to do as well as the first one, but I was not anticipating this much of a drop it was wild yeah. yeah i forget if all of us were in the the first one's overrated camp when we talked about it before but i definitely thought it was overrated but despite that i mean the way that it did so well mm -hmm. it just seemed like people were into that character in that story and you think that before word of mouth could get out that there'd be enough people who liked the first one who would still be interested in the second but for whatever reason it just like before anyone for... knew what this movie was about, I think people yeah. stopped being interested. I think yeah, as soon it... as they said musical, the people who embraced the first one, who were, I think were already going to be tough to get back, were like, "No thanks." Yeah, I, it, it's one of those. It's like, who was this for? Yeah. Okay. Well, now we're done talking about that villain. Let's talk about horror movie <laughs> villains. Did you even? I mean, see I... the second Joker movie. Mm -hmm. You mean Joker Folly Adu? Oh God! No. Real, real, real quick before going to the brackets, Rob mentioned uh, crying. Is it weird that I cried at the scent of my best friend's house at the beginning of the? Did you watch the SNL last night? I saw that. Yeah, I did. Uh, it is weird that you would cry. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm exaggerating, I know, I know. of course. It but was so sincere for so. It was a long. sincere, touching song. That it made it that much funnier for yeah. so long that I was like, "This is either the surprise is that it's going to stay sincere, or it's going to take a bizarre turn." And then it took a bizarre turn. Yeah, <laughs> like I did not. I have not. I, I did not get to watch it. So I mean, I've watched some clips. I watched her Celine Dion, which is amazing. It's a, yeah. so unreal. Good. Like yeah. you close your she eyes, you think gift. is actually she Celine is, talking. She is so good at doing other people's voices. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember that about her. Like she is mm -hmm. so good at that. Yeah. Um. And of course, I saw the Family Feud thing, but yeah. yeah. yeah I just that wish that they had tried to use, you know, wig or makeup or something to make her look more like Celine Dion. I didn't like that they didn't cover up the hand tattoos. It's like that's not Celine. You're taking me out of this whole sketch now. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. like, well, I did. I didn't. Uh, yeah, sketch right because it's not skit. Yeah. Correct. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, call back to last episode. Yes. And also call back to my favorite scene of I'm kidding when I say favorite 60. scene of Studio oh, 60. Oh, yeah. God, Simpsons. I forgot about that. Yeah. Skits yeah. are when the football <laughs> players dress up like the cheerleaders. Anyway. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Love you, Aaron. Funny um, that we yeah. all remember that deep cut. I mean, yeah, you talk about a, deep cut. I uh, the deep <laughs> cut. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the horror movie villains bracket. It let's was it. probably the easiest to put together, but then still also harder than I anticipated mm -hmm. it to be. Because I was like, oh, this would be easy. And then I was like, oh, I've got like 50 some characters that I can put in this bracket. And I got to find 30 some. It's a good problem to have. It's a, it is, but it was still like hard to do one of the sections. You usually what, have like 100 that you try to whittle into this? True, yeah. Yeah. Right off the bat, I knew who my top seeds were going to be because it's obviously Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger mm -hmm. and Dracula are like probably first ones to come to mind. And I was like, those are going to be number one seeds. So I'm, let me try you, to. I, you it made, a, made that. a mistake though. You forgot to have Ted Cruz as one of the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh my but he's God. Wolfman. He's <laughs> yeah, Wolfman. Yeah, he's <laughs> and uh... Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I just try to build it around that. And Dracula was the classic horror movie, like golden era horror movie. And yep. so that section, and I'm kind of jumping around the bracket here, but in the bottom left, Dracula slash Nosferatu. Figured I'd make those in the mm -hmm. same section. Creature from the Black Lagoon, also known as Gill Man. Terrible. Name. Really? Terrible name. I did not but yes. know that. that Gill Man makes him other about scary to me. Yeah, it's like, this is a silly name. It's like the, the producer of the Live with Gilman. Kelly and... Uh, <laughs> Gilman. <laughs> Gilman, what did you do David this weekend? David Letterman, David Letterman, David Letterman. <laughs> um, zombies, which is just like whoever your favorite zombies are. I just didn't, I didn't mm -hmm. want to like break it up with all these different Sherry zombies. Moon. 
They're coming <laughs> to get you, Lyra. Yeah, it could be that one. It could be anyone you want. Jaws. Our, uh, Jaws Margaret, was in sorry, there. Which, right. Yes. Jaws, which almost didn't put them in here, but then was like, ah, I got to put them in. Is They're Jaws the... not binary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to put them in here. So Jaws is the newest of the classics characters because I just felt like definitely a classic can't be something from the last 40 years. Yeah. But Jaws felt right. And Wolfman slash Werewolf, mm-hmm. or just Werewolves, if you want to put it that way. Invisible Man, Frankenstein's Monster, and The Mummy. And and I did it like a typical seed. You know, it's like one versus eight. Then mm-hmm. below that, four versus five. And then below that, three versus six. And at the bottom, two versus seven. Props and, to you, by the way, for correctly recognizing him as Frankenstein's monster and not yeah. Frankenstein. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to put Frankenstein when you're filling your bracket out, fine. <laughs> I mean, even though I know like, it's Frankenstein's monster, I usually just say Frankenstein. Yeah, it's yeah. Like okay. easier to say. But at top left, you got Jason Voorhees, The Fly, The Thing versus Candyman, Pinhead versus The Babadook, then the Xenomorph Alien from Alien. The Alien franchise and Trimmers, and then what's the top... name of that bracket? Is that like monsters? So, and that's just that? monsters. Okay, that's just monsters. Jason Voorhees is the undead, so maybe technically he's a zombie, but you gotta separate these characters. <laughs> you know, like, you gotta, I gotta give a, a way to put make Jason number one in a oh, category. Jason, yeah, it's it's a different thing. Yeah, yeah, and also hard to get eight. For the classic section. And then top right, Freddy Krueger versus Damien. And this is a demons slash possessed slash supernatural. So mm-hmm. if it falls in the one or multiple of those three, that's this section. So Freddy Krueger versus Damien, Pennywise versus Jack Torrance from The Shining, Pazuzu, the exorcist demon, Carrie, those two are up against each other, Chucky. Up against the rings, Samara or Samara, Samara, Zamata, no, <laughs> <laughs> but Ayo. Samara Morgan, and yeah, so that's that group. Chucky, I think, very fairly the two seed. Mm-hmm. I like that choice. I don't think Chucky gets enough credit. And then the bottom, these are human beings, and so for this top seed, I'm going by the first movie, and I guess you could say mm-hmm. the second movie. The mm-hmm. ones after that, they did make them more supernatural and mm-hmm. tried to like put all this demonry in there. But the whole point of the original movies was that he mm-hmm. just embodies or or he, he was just evil. He was just an evil guy. He was like, but he was a real person. Even uh, part four was still, he was a normal guy. He just inexplicably sub- sub- survived an explosion. <laughs> yeah. So that was Michael Myers. And mm-hmm. that's going up against Pearl. A star. What do you do? <laughs> you said you love me. Uh, <laughs> Leatherface. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Leatherface so of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Jigsaw of the Saw movies. Mm-hmm. Norman Bates of Psycho and Hannibal uh, going up against Hannibal Lecter. The, the late great, great Hannibal Lecter. The <laughs> late great Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> the late he's, great. He's coming in from Mexico. <laughs> I love him. You know, we um, went to see Dr. Chilton, and uh, you know, we had him from dinner. So. Wow. <laughs> uh, and that was a kind of a controversial choice because I don't see The Silence of the Lambs as a horror movie, but I saw it more as a thriller, but some yeah, psychological it, thriller. It's yeah. it, probably when it came out, it was way more categorized as a horror movie. I don't know. I don't think it was. I, I, I like people yeah, really know, but I remember. There was this is this is okay. This is a deep cut. There was like a horror movie award show, and it won like best horror movie of that year too. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So like it was still it was it's so hard, Jason. Nowadays we would just say no, that's just a thriller. Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't consider it, but it is horrifying. Yeah, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. But there were so many people, so many lists that he ended up on as great movie yeah. horror movie Our villains. Movie. I was like, yeah. all right. Yeah. And he's makes, like too iconic to not put him on there, but he's the sixth yeah. seed because to sort of differentiate because like, ah, is it really a horror movie? Yeah. And um, second seed, and I stand by this, but I might be wrong, was Ghostface. From yeah, Street. I don't think you're wrong at all. I don't yeah. think that's a that's a top tier one for me. Yeah, there's such an iconic 
thing and has stood the test of time. And then mm-hmm. in the seventh seed, going up against Ghostface, is Annie Wilkes of Misery, which also I was a little bit like, should I? But it's a Stephen King. It's yeah. a horror. That's a horror movie. Yeah. Also, it was an Oscar winning performance. Oh, so. uh, yeah. 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 So those are the sections. Should I talk about who didn't make the cut before yeah. we? Yeah, we can talk about honorable mentions. Yeah, so Mrs. Voorhees and Frankenfurter from a Rocky Horror Picture Show mm-hmm. did not make the humans slash no powers section. The monster section, there were a ton to go with. I didn't put in Gremlins or Godzilla or King Kong or Pale Man of Pan's Labyrinth or The Predator. I was going to say The Predator. Yeah. The Predator made some lists it's, and then I looked up the it, movie and there was it was just like saying it's sci-fi thriller it wasn't even saying yeah horror, predator, like, predator is horrifying but it's not it's a it's yeah. just like one of the greatest right. action movies ever made like right. but it's not yeah and slender man made a couple of lists that i came across but i was like i mean there are a million monsters that you could put oh yeah but those are the ones that got the closest to also to, to getting in and then in the demon slash possessed slash slash supernatural section megan who shout out because I do think that the actress did a really great job in that role and made like a really creepy character and, and made she was a, like a really good dancer and she like, was also really creepy on girls too. <laughs> <laughs> Not Ashley Williams or Allison Williams. Allison um, Williams. <laughs> to- just Ashley throw the Williams keys. Totally throw different. the keys. Okay, throw the keys. Give me the purse. <laughs> mm. No, I thought I thought Megan was fun, but it was kind of hard putting her in the right category because she's not really a monster and she's not possessed. I th- it's she's hard not a when demon it's a one- and she's it's not a supernatural. A, like, when it's a one-off, it's a little tricky. Pearl yeah. is in a couple different movies, technically. Mm-hmm. So I think we could count Pearl. But like, yeah, Megan, I think they're making a sequel. I'm not sure. I They've got they were... three Pearl movies. Well, yeah. well, technically, Maxine. I don't think Pearl's in Maxine, but it's in that universe. It's but in it's that in universe. that universe. Prequel, it's prequel, some kind right? of connection. Yeah. No, is Maxine is at after X. Uh, yeah, it's like in the eighties. Um, yeah, so it's, but, uh, it, it, yeah, it is so, Pearl adjacent, but yeah, right, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought Pearl made sense to put in here, but I wasn't sure about Megan. It just like what in what category yeah. do you put her in? It, I just yeah. thought, well, yeah, she yeah. a little more recent, but, a little yeah. more time. Yeah, she might yeah. Make right, right. I don't right. know who she'd knock out. Maybe the ring. I don't know. But no. um, yeah, I don't know. It's a pin. The nun. Mm. Yeah. Almost in there. Or Annabelle. That, that's one. Annabelle's that... on the list. Oh, it is? As oh, well. Crap, I mean, I like in this oh, list oh, of oh, uh, like, did, oh, almost yeah. in make. I was about to mention her. Yeah. Sinister. Bug Hool. I don't know how you pronounce Bagul. that. Bagul. Bagul. And um, Esther from Orphans. So. Yeah. yeah. Or, those yeah, are the I mean, there's... who didn't make it. Yeah, and there, I'm sure there are more, but that's just where I stopped. Where I mean, that's, that's yeah. a bunch. That's a bunch. Oh, and there's actually some more on this other sheet that didn't even make that cut. So, I I mean, Count Orlock, somebody put on its own, and I was like, no, it's just Dracula. I'm, like, I'm not doing this. Mm-hmm. How make about it. Dr. Acula? <laughs> yeah, yeah. JD. Audrey, too, from Little Shop of Horrors. Clover. The facility of Cabot in the Woods, the white people in Get Out, Abigail, <laughs> the chef from the menu, the entity from It Follows, you Alex to... Forrest of Fatal Attraction, mm. Buffalo <laughs> Bill. I mean, a big fat fat person. <laughs> <laughs> if you had see. added Buffalo Bill, you would have an Ed Gein bracket. Oh, yeah. No, if you added Buffalo Bill, I just do the whole thing. It's Buffalo Bill. No, Jason, <laughs> I think that. Yeah, and there's like Sweeney Todd and Patrick Bateman and Patrick Bateman doesn't count. He didn't maybe he never didn't killed know. anybody. I, yeah, you know. And, it's, uh, yeah, and so I mean, there there are a bunch of those. Yeah, there's. I mean, and but I, I like the way it came out. Yeah, no, I I, mm-hmm. I I agree with like yeah. I was trying to think of like what is like one that's like screaming like oh my god, didn't you do this? It's like eh, no, but I don't think there's really there there there's a lot of horror movies. I mean, maybe um, what's your face from Sleepaway Camp? But you know, have you ever watched any of those Sleepaway Camp movies? No. There's a lot of those. Oh, I can't remember her name, Amanda or something like that. But she was the killer in those. Mm, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was trying to think of like ones that had like a lot of sequels with it. Yeah, um, should have like done the, the Thanks ch- for the Ride Lady from. Oh <laughs> God. 
Uh, thanks um, for the ride. Thanks for the <laughs> ride, lady. My oof, my parents they always say that. That's yeah. what, wait, thanks for the Jason ride. Jason and I used to quote that all the time. God, that was <laughs> that's probably one of the reasons why we're best friends. But yeah, it's like yep. yeah, it's like that one that that movie like that one fucked me up as a kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you so and I were talking on the phone earlier, Jason, I kind of felt bad that Gremlins we didn't find a way to sneak it in there. It's, but then I looking was, at the bracket, I I get yeah. it. The, like the I don't really see about, who they'd boot up. Yeah. The hard thing about Gremlins is the first one is pretty horrifying, and that's why I struggle because like Luke really wants to watch it because we were at a restaurant and they had like all the stuff from the eighties. Yeah, and he was he was he saw Gizmo and he's like, "Who's Gizmo?" I was like, "Oh, he's from Gremlins." And he's like, oh, "I want to watch Gremlins," and I'm like, "No, I don't think so because I think it's kind of scary." And I think <laughs> like, it's yeah, Gizmo's so adorable. Yeah, but Gizmo isn't. <laughs> but like when you get to Critters Two, I mean Critters Two, Gremlins Two, Critters was another one. Gremlins Two, it's so next level funny and different that it kind of makes them not horrifying at all the only scary one is the spider one Mm. so there's nothing scary in gremlins 2 and Uh, yeah kind of as a as a viewer as an audience member it's not scary but if you were in that studio (laughs) you'd be scared shitless (laughs) no they're singing they're singing frank sinatra and like no they're talking that guy's got glasses like no, I don't know. That Gremlins got the other ones got big old boobies and like like ear and like lips and like no. They did no. some weird Gremlins. I guess. I mean, they got the one that's vegetables. No, <laughs> no, they're, they're not still sc- killing people. No, oh, yeah, sort of, but <laughs> not like not like the not like the science teacher. The science teacher getting killed in the first one's pretty scary. Like that part's good. Yeah, but it's then been like so long since I've seen any. But of then there's like things. the old lady. They like change her. She has like one of those like lifts to go upstairs, and they like make it super fast, and it throws her out the window. That part's pretty funny. <laughs> but yeah, they're just they're it's yeah. There's too much Steven Spielberg for it to be scary. <laughs> yeah, did, I, I mean, did any of your lists when you were looking have like Gozer? No. Or what about the Poltergeist? Uh, that was something <laughs> on that was one that I considered, and I think a couple of people did list it. But I was like, I don't know. It feels like it's mostly the TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's a like, metaphor. It's a, it's a metaphor. I know. I just I was just like, ah, it's it's harder, and also like I don't know. Do you know, I would have had I, to put it, I guess, in the demon slash possessed. You, slash I hadn't seen that movie in a long time, and like I remember, I don't know, like. 10 years ago I'm like turning on HBO and it's the scene where the guy like tears his face off and I was like what is this movie I completely <laughs> forgot that whole scene and I was like what is this and I'm like, what am I watching I and well I, I guess yeah. those are going back to that one was probably in too little of a movie for well, people she wasn't to... scary yeah yeah I mean there are a bunch out there and a bunch we haven't mm-hmm. mentioned and it's like yeah you know, this is yeah i was trying to do the ones that are like quintessential that you can't do without and they yeah even then there's still a couple of them you're gonna leave out but what can you oh, do? yeah i of didn't course. feel like gozer was missing i don't even no. know what made me think of her just now right. because you're an expert on the real be like yeah. real, <laughs> real feel good. um so let's go over Same. so let's <laughs> let's now talk about what was in the early sections not the finals but in the early sections was there Something that was really hard to decide between Justina, we will start with you. Well, you know, here's my thing about this bracket. I like this bracket. I like this bracket a lot. And I think this bracket can be done like at least three times. I think it can be done the scariest. (laughs) I think it can be done the most deadly. I think it can just be done your favorite character. Mm -hmm. And so mine for the viewers at home listening you can't see but mine has a lot of cross outs because <laughs> i i changed my mind based on what i thought i was ranking them as and i yeah. eventually completed my bracket as just like my favorite one you know yeah. not the most scary just like my favorite did one. you right did, that's did, yeah I, did you start the list thinking this first that like literally this yeah first like that. who like, like yeah that's the like, three ways like, you yeah, can look at it because yeah, like, yeah. i was like what would happen if a xenomorph fought a tree right it's like yeah you know, they I were fighting each that, other so one yeah, if they yeah. were fighting, that would be one way to look at it if your favorite or what's scary. Like, those are three legit yeah. ways to look at yeah. it. Yeah. So, all that to say, you know, no, I know what I like. I did tell Jason when I was doing this, I, I felt scared. Like, I was... <laughs> she I was didn't like, keep saying okay, that. Okay, I'm done with this. By the time I was done with it. So, but was one particularly... Is there one that was like... Without that revealing your top four, top two, or your final girl is it's listen versus babadook was hard for me because 
I love the Babadook. I've never seen Pinhead, but it just looks very, very scary very to me. Scary, yeah. So I was like, is this scary or is it my favorite? You know, so that was tough. I'm, I I think I watched maybe the first Hellraiser as an adult and I just wasn't as into it as I'm into the look. Mm. <laughs> like I really dig yeah, the look of the character. Or I Hellraiser did. 2? No, no, in a di- also we tried oh. to watch Hellraiser and I don't think I could do it or that's exactly what it was. We were still in the basement yeah. in apartment, but um speaking of scary. Yeah, I think maybe I finished it, but I was like, I'm fine with it, but I just wasn't as I, I just wasn't as into it as I am into the idea of Pinhead. But mm-hmm. there's a TV series that looks pretty spooky scary. Like the, the Pinhead and that is doing a great job. Spooky scary. From the clips I've seen. Is it a movie or a series? Either way, it's on like Hulu or something. I don't know. I watched the new movie and it was very disappointing. Mm-hmm. I What I saw of the actor's performance in the new one, I was like, oh, I dig it. I dig what you're doing. It's it, scary. It, it had nothing to do with the lady that played because they switched. They made Ben had a female. I don't care about that. Oh, it had I know. Nothing, yeah, it had nothing to do with that. It was just. I they made it super like scary. It. I had forgotten game. about there being a controversy about the gender swap. To yeah, that, and people were like, well, you just haven't read the book, I guess, since it uh, doesn't have a gender. And the... <laughs> like, yeah, that's what like people were pointing out. They're all about pain as pleasure. Mm. Yeah. People are just weird now about this kind of stuff. Yeah, being woke. Pinhead went woke. Mm. <laughs> and it's weird. <laughs> so scary no, i'm just i'm <laughs> kidding <laughs> i'm making fun of the people i i don't want to say that there's someone in my life that literally that was their complaint about the movie and i was like that is not what's wrong with the movie <laughs> yeah. like it is ridiculous when and that person like, was my sister such okay. went woke. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, um, the thing. I, I watch you all know i watch like scream crush and new rock stars and there is a, a show since we're not really talking about it i won't name the show there's a show where they were talking about I hate because of all of the 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 misogynist anti fill in the blank that I've got to act like I kind of care a little bit about the show and not act like they they did some characters wrong in this one episode like I just want to be able to say it was bad for this it, it's like it was it's, it's my problem with you know, we've litigated it, but it's my problem with the Paul Feig Ghostbusters film. Yeah, it had mm-hmm. nothing to do with them being female. It was just not funny yeah. and not good. Right, like, right. and and I hate. I like. I don't want to be in that <laughs> camp. Like, listen, sisters, they can do it on their own. I mean, I get it. Mm-hmm. Like, I I'm a feminist. I've got. I'm a father of a daughter. It just wasn't good. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you're one of those guys who says, as a father of a daughter. <laughs> as a father of a daughter, I'm going to um, locker room the fuck out of this talk. So. I would. So I did laugh a lot during that Ghostbusters, but I don't, I don't think any Ghostbusters after the first one is that good. It's a futile. Ghostbusters yeah, 2, yeah. when we rewatched it when we were older, mm-hmm. we were laughing a lot at, at Bill Murray. But mm-hmm. it's still not a great movie, and I still don't like the like put the ectoplasm on the Statue of Liberty and then play Motown. And it'll make her walk. It's like that's yeah, corny. It's ridiculous. I don't it's, like any of that stuff. Even, not, even just, in the it's context, it's not just of that Motown. Movie, it's Jackie it's Wilson, guys. It's Jackie that's, Wilson. That's fair. Yeah. And like the two that Reitman had something. Uh, Jason Reitman, I should say, had something to do with are not bad movies, but they also are not like they're not either. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I was fine watching them, but I wasn't like, oh, this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong. It was just like, except, I don't know, whatever. Enough so of this. The issue <laughs> yeah. I had with the Paul Feig one is I'd that it was to too much of Jason. a remake. Right. It was yeah. too much of a remake. It was rehashing the original one, but not as good. And even the graphics didn't look yeah. as good. And Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would work with all of the people involved. As yes. Tina Fey said, opinions are expensive. <laughs> no, uh, but for real, um, I don't hate any of the movies, but I I don't love any of them other than the first one. Yeah. And yeah. that's just how I feel about them. But I, I don't hate any of them. Hmm. But so, anyway, let me go over what I found difficult mm-hmm. when I was putting this together. Very first round, Jaws versus Zombies. Yes. It's like too yes. much respect for both. It's very yes. difficult. Ditto. It's, it- and that's where I ran into the literally where I ran into it was well, what is scarier? It's like mm-hmm. ultimately 
because because now I went through what happens if a shark is worth the zombie, and there is an Italian movie where a shark is against a zombie. If you ever want to find that clip mm-hmm. on YouTube, that <laughs> guy okay, should have died. But like, I don't know, like, what do you do there? Because yeah. because Jaws is my favorite movie of all time, mm-hmm. but you can avoid Jaws. <laughs> zombies yeah, i don't, don't go in the ocean <laughs> zombies yeah. i don't know if you can avoid oh that's right? interesting i yeah i get that but also if you're against jaws you lose against a zombie you might win no like, see i i would i see i would say you can survive a shark attack but either the wow. if the zombie bites you you're a zombie you're a zombie or they're gonna interesting. Just, okay you know, i see yeah. I you see. don't turn yeah. into a shark if a yeah. shark you don't turn into, oh you. god that would yeah, oh my you. god write, write this down that's an idea you get bit by a shark and then you begin oh shit we got it we got gold guys. zombie shark fuck this podcast we got it you, zombie hey, shark this, you can this, turn into a shark okay okay this is good i'm not yeah. like but other guys i'm not like others I'm not, <laughs> but, oh guys guys michael, michael phelps that's why michael, I like Ph- you. michael phelps it's michael phelps <laughs> I know, michael, that's why i like you can we go <laughs> oh yeah we got a new movie y'all. we got yep. all right we got it we got it somebody call phelpsy up <laughs> but you know but, ultimately the reason why i went with zombies rob was because of your argument from greatest villains episode where yeah Z- jaws is a shark he's not yeah. a villain you're a villain yeah. yeah yeah oh that's a good point yeah he's not the villain of the movie it's the mayor same with the fly uh, who's on this list he's not a villain he just turned himself into a fly <laughs> well he, he yeah on axe yeah. yeah yeah but it's he's also not, he's not evil He's not evil. He's just he's just becoming. I don't know. He does some kind of evil things because like, of what he turned into. Because of what he turned into. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, let me see if there's another one that was tough. I mean, anytime zombies went up against something, I was like, man. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say no to that one, but I well, still gotta. Go. <laughs> like, a hard a hard one out the gate for me is is Leatherface versus Jigsaw. Um, that is yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and I, I don't love I, the Saw movies, but. I, do i mm-hmm. i'm not proud of it but i love the, <laughs> i love the saw movie i'm a sucker for the saw movie some of them are, are not as good as others and some of them i'm like that just doesn't seem right but yeah like as a character and, and as an idea it's pretty clever mm-hmm. but you can't argue with the importance of leatherface like texas chainsaw massacre yeah. changed you know the, yeah. the world in my opinion and i a lot of people Consider the one of the greatest American movies ever made. Mm. I don't go that far, but I do think it's it's very well made, and I think it's a brilliant film. But I don't think it's better than Godfather Two, Goodfellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, like, did but, you have any others that were super tough? That one was hard. I mean, just because I, my love of Stephen King, Jack Torrance versus Pennywise, but Pennywise yeah. will always win. And see now, my Pennywise. This is my Pennywise. It's a Tim total Curry. accident that it was Stephen, Stephen King, King versus Stephen, versus Stephen King, King. By the way, <laughs> yeah, but Jack Torrance is a very <laughs> scary character. But I, I, I mean, Pennywise is it, by far Pennywise gave is me the way most night- scarier. Well, especially yeah. Tim Curry as Benny Pennywise. I, I like yes. the new. Well, I like the first part, not the second. Right, part. right. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but like not Chapter Two. Chapter Two, Follow, which is Folly Two. Volume yeah. two, it just wasn't. I, even though it had my beloved Bill Hader in it, it just it yeah. was. Yeah, he was the best part of it. Yeah, but like that, yeah, like the growing up, you know, I was ten years old when that came on ABC, and it's Pennywise is still one of the scariest oh, characters of all time. But, but, The Shining is just. I mean, there. I mean, yeah. Does it get scarier than him chopping down the door, like yeah. axing the door? It's just it's iconic. Honestly, Iconic. It's so iconic. It's so scary. When he takes out Scatman Crothers, it's just, you know. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that's um, that's a that's a hard fight for me. That's a hard one. Yeah. Trey? What were your what were So your... I you know, I I make it unanimous on zombies and jaws being hard. Mm-hmm. I also thought I didn't expect this to be hard, but when I was putting it together, Ghostface versus Annie Wilkes oh. was hard because I do think that as a mask as a as a halloween costume ghostface is way more iconic in in, mm-hmm. in, in the movies yes. and it's obviously in all the movies yep but i think ultimately what caused me to go annie wilkes aside oh. from the fact that that's a oscar performance is that ghostface on, on the screen movies on purpose were a little on the humorous side and making fun of that genre a little mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. so it made it less scary to me and it's a different ghost face in every movie. 
It's the same mask. Spoiler. But a different person. <laughs> what do you so, mean you know, it's not Annie Matthew Woods. Lillard in all of them? <laughs> and Skeet. Oh. Skeet's got an eight. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just went Annie Wilkes there. As much as I love Norman Bates, and I did have Norman Bates win, having him go against Hannibal Lecter yeah. was difficult. Yeah. But, but you I, know, it, I... it made it easier because it... That it, you know, Silence of the Lambs isn't really a horror movie. Yeah, that was part of it for me. And then also, I just wanted to write Norman exclamation point. So it was always like, yeah. oh man, yeah. like the way the mother but said it. Can I, <laughs> can I add, like, no, just, man. when you're thinking about like Hannibal Lecter as a character, is he a better character over the oeuvre of works versus oh, of Norman Bates? Thank you. Before over Northern, you know, Norman Bates, because. I'd argue that most of the Psycho sequels are not very good. I know some people like <laughs> two. Some people make arguments for three, but after that, and then I don't know. I've never watched the show Bates Motel. Jason Norman was Bates dead for Motel. that. No, no, no. There's the new one. Oh, the oh one you mean Vera the Freddie Hyman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was with thinking... Vera Famiga. Yeah. <laughs> Jason and... Batesman Motel. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there's, there's, yeah. That's the versus, same one I was thinking of. Just... Versus like... <laughs> You know, you may vary on Hannibal. I liked Hannibal. Again, I like Ridley Scott, apparently. You know, actually, I think that Red Dragon's pretty better than people remember. Like, I honestly do. Like, I think Mm. Red Red Dragon is the best Brett Ratner will ever do in a movie. Oh, absolutely. Bar none. Yeah, bar none. Except maybe, except maybe Rush Hour, those different genres. So, Heart Apples and Oranges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So Isn't there it, someone who played Hannibal before it was Brian Cox and, yeah. and, and right. Michael Man Mann's Hunter. Man, Man Hunter. Hunter. Yes, yes. And he does, you know, he's Brian Cox, but yeah, <laughs> like it's okay. <laughs> the what thing that was funny to me about that version of the characters at the end, he says, I love you. You're just not serious people. These people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was You're funny. Delicious. That he but... died, but because he didn't wear compression socks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I, he did yeah. eat someone in that movie and go, bah, 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 bah. Bah. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think because the of the if you've never watched Hannibal the show, which was amazing. Like it, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. literally it's such a beautiful show. Was it Mads? Mads, Mads Mickelson, Mads, yeah. Mads Mickelson and, and Hugh Dancy. Uh, Hugh Dancy is was Will Graham, phenomenal. <laughs> like just really, I I highly recommend the show. It's it's a it's a really good watch. And you and know, what, um, t- what took and me out of that is Jack Jack Crawford. Yeah. What took me out of that, and it's the mistake of how they marketed it. Same thing for Base Motel, is they marketed just as a prequel, but not as a reboot. And so I'm thinking this is supposed to be like the earlier. You know, yeah, Anthony Hopkins or the 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 earlier Anthony Perkins, and it didn't fly in either. But if they had just said it's a reboot, it's a new thing, then I probably would have welcomed yeah, both. It feels more. way more like a new thing with him, and I think it's and maybe because Anthony Hopkins is so iconic as Hannibal Lecter that maybe like it felt like it was new and the way they were doing it because they don't follow Red Dragon immediately in the story. Like it's right. It's more yeah, about it's like, yeah, it's more about the before cases. that. Yeah, before yeah. Red Dragon. Like how and they became close. How they became close they... and how he manipulated him basically. Right. Yeah. So I yeah, that's a hard that's a hard one. Again, it's like yeah. you can't argue the significance of psycho, but like, I don't know. It's hard. That's a hard one. I, I'm gonna still mm-hmm. be thinking about that one for a while. For me, similar to what Jason said about Michael Myers, I had to look at psycho based on the first one. Michael Myers Mostly. is dead, Mom. <laughs> oh, Man, you beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, and me. I knew all three of us were chomping at the bit. Yeah. But with Psycho, it was, was mostly written. about Psycho 1. With Hannibal Lecter, it was mostly Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. And while I did also include some of the thoughts of the sequels as mm-hmm. I went deeper in the brackets, it was mostly those movies. And I just love Psycho, I think, a little more than I love mm-hmm. Silence of the Lambs. See, and I'm opposite. And yeah. And I also just think that Psycho is more of a horror movie than Silence of the Lambs. So that that was how I it. came because I uh, I like both movies a lot. I probably when I'm thinking horror movies, Halloween, then Psycho. I'm gonna lean more towards Psycho. Right, and that's it's, why it's, I kind of went with but that. I, it's like I get, ah, spooky season. Let me just yeah. get spooky answers. Yeah, and it's hard because like I'm, yeah. I've watched Silence of the Lambs so much, it's just like. A warm blanket I wear. I want to see it again. Actually, oh, I'm, I'm it's, game to see it again. But it's mm-hmm. yeah, and you have to have to, just the way that like he frames 
her the entire time, like shows how small she is, and it's just mm-hmm. it's, it's such a yeah. good, it's truly won the Oscar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, the other two hard brackets yeah. for me, real quick. I um, also found Pennywise versus Jack Torrance to be difficult, and yeah. if to Justina's point, if I pull this out again tomorrow, I might do it differently. Yeah. yeah. But I just went Jack Nicholson performance. Mm. That, that was what that was tough for me. for me. That's I, that's a good point too, Trey. Yeah, yeah. I went with Pennywise just because he's spookier to me. Again, it was just like I think he's mm-hmm. a little bit scarier. I would be yeah. more scared, but I also had a very tough time with that because it's such a good performance. Yeah. yeah. But and then the other thing too, I think about the shining. Is he the scariest thing or are the ghosts the scariest thing? <laughs> yeah. Because mm-hmm. I, I find the twin, obviously yeah. the twins. The lady in twins. room two, the mm. twins. The lady in room two thirty seven. Twins are dead, mom. <laughs> twins are dead, mom. Let's go to this concert. Do- I really want to see Trap. I I love Josh Hartnett. I just do. I just do. <laughs> I didn't recognize that was him in Oppenheimer at first because I hadn't seen him mm. since he looked more like Michael Myers is dead. dead mom. Like he's he looks oh. great. He just looks he- a little different. Have you, so well, he, did, he did a horrifying episode of Black Mirror with Aaron Paul. So good oh, in that God, episode. That oh God, it is episode. the worst. It, oh, I mean, it was, worst. it was, it was, no, it's the, the, it was great. It was just, it was the worst. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh God. Yeah. 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 And did you have another one, Trey? W- one last one, which was Pazuzu versus Carrie, because yeah, respect Jason to Carrie, ta- but I love yeah. That Jason and I, I talked on the people. phone about this. Carrie wasn't really evil; she was just bullied and got mm-hmm. powers mm-hmm. after everyone laughed, laughed at, at her. her. <laughs> They're all gonna laugh, <laughs> laugh at, you. at you. Yeah. So you know, it was kind of like you know, what she did at the end was obviously wrong, but you mm-hmm. understand how that happens when someone gets all this power all at once in that moment. And they are a teenager and they don't know how to deal with right. their feelings. Yeah. And yeah. so ultimately, I kind of saw her as not quite villainous enough uh even in uh, to to beat i would i would i would i would say i would say i would say the real (laughs) villain of that movie is nancy allen but yeah yeah, that's a good point yeah like or her mom like either one of them Mm -hmm. they both get what they got well nancy allen um, was trying to help and just messed up at the end no 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 no. nancy allen was the bully it was what's her face the other one was her friend she was married to Spielberg, wasn't she? Kate Capshaw. Yeah, I can't. I'm, I, I think I know who you're talking about, but I can't think of her right mm-hmm. now. I'm blanking. But either way, Carrie is not the villain. Yeah, right, the, right. The mm-hmm. thing. So that was why you went, ended up with Pazuzu. Yeah. Amy Irving. God damn. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Trey, top four. Who'd you end up putting as your final girl? So we could do this quick. Rapid yeah. fire. So in the monster category, it was reasonably easy for me to pick Jason Voorhees, actually. I had him beating the Xenomorph. Mm-hmm. I like, I mean, Pinhead, I had similar comments to y'all. And, and Candyman, Tony Todd does great. But Jason Voorhees versus Xenomorph just made it more sense to me. And then Jason Voorhees won. Um, my Elite Eight in the Classics, Dracula versus Frankenstein's Monster, which was a difficult pick for me. Frankenstein's monster isn't necessarily a villain, but he felt a little more iconic to me. So I picked him over Dracula, which was a little bit of a surprise. And then coming out of that bracket was ch 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 In your finals. And yeah. And then coming out of Supernatural. So when when the villain can be scary while talking shit to you, mm-hmm. that's pretty good. <laughs> so Freddy Krueger versus Chucky was that Elite Eight with mm-hmm. uh freddy krueger coming out of that mm-hmm. and out of the just regular folks michael myers is not dead in this bracket he <laughs> went up against norman bates norman i'm surprised he went this far because like Jason norman? talked about on the phone <laughs> it's just that he wasn't really villain in the sense that you normally think about it he was abused as a kid and all and had a psychological break that caused that but he clearly did villainous things so it justified him going that far but michael myers beat him Mm -hmm. so it's freddy krueger versus michael myers in the final four with not my favorite movie winning because i just think that a dude who was silent the whole time maybe isn't quite as fun as the dude who talks shit and comes mm-hmm. in your dreams. Plus you wanted to do Jason versus Freddy in the finals. 
I actually forgot that I said that when we came up with this bracket. But yes, I did say that <laughs> when we were coming up with when we were talking about the bracket via text. But mm, so I that, think you just so that also kind of said who you accident. probably won. If you, if Freddie beat Michael Myers because he doesn't talk, then he must beat Jason yeah. Voorhees. I think the other thing too is even though not every Nightmare on Elm Street movie is great, I think the Halloween franchise just went so far downhill after part two that it, and it defeated what like J what Jason said it defeated what made Michael Myers scary in the first place is that this was the kid next door mm -hmm. all American looking kid who just was evil out of nowhere mm -hmm. and not supernatural evil not possessed just like not right in the head like serial killer stuff and and the other movies just made that cartoonish especially the most recent trilogy so yeah. i think that's where freddy not the jackie earl haley i'm not including that i'm just talking about robert england sir like, robert england. no matter how <laughs> bad any nightmare on elm street movie was robert england did great yeah he was and as so, iconic in that role as robert downey jr is as iron man yeah <laughs> somebody you know um, you know the the most diabolical thing that freddy krueger did was that in 1988 he made dj jazzy jeff and the fresh prince think that they had defeated him <laughs> and then all of a sudden at the oscars in 2022 oh my gosh <laughs> freddy krueger when when will smith fell asleep during the <laughs> ceremony <laughs> freddy krueger entered his dreams oh my god and made him think that freddy was on the stage oh wow talking shit about <laughs> jada <laughs> just wow. ruined will smith's life at that moment that's the most diabolical uh, thing Freddy Krueger yeah, could that's do. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty so good. that's why Freddy Krueger won my bracket. Well, the long mm. walk, but it was deserved. <laughs> good <laughs> job. Good job. Good fun answer and a good bracket. I'm going to do mine. So my final four. I had Babadook against Jason, and I just like Babadook more than the Friday the 13th movies. And so Babadook is in my final Wait a minute. Four. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I Did Babadook on the top of an apartment in new york city when fighting a guy <laughs> knock his head off after he said take your shot <laughs> after no, he having did not. been punched did baba duke even kill any baba duke didn't even kill anybody Come i on. just don't like the, Jason, the, the friday the 13th movies all that much and no, i um, agree baba duke is i, I love the baba duke movie yeah it's yeah oh yeah. you know who we should have included it was the heredity just like her right? yeah that was a it yeah. was tough to figure out where to put it yeah and because yeah. somebody did they i was they just had, thinking they about... listed the son as the villain and i was like f you guys f and you guys. well he did technically you know knock his sister's head off yeah, yeah. it was pretty bad yeah. all right uh bottom left zombies went up against frankenstein's monster mm -hmm. and i had zombies because i just really love zombies yeah and baba duke beat zombies to be in the finals so they didn't um, come to get you barbara I Bobby had, did. because of the answers Trey gave, I had Freddie going pretty far. I, I mean, I just think it's a really great performance, but I love The Exorcist. So Pazuzu mm -hmm. beat out Freddie mm -hmm. and uh, was in my final four. Uh, it's a controversial Pazuzu beating both Chucky and Freddie. And also, like, obviously Chucky and Freddie are like two fun matchups in this category, but I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't let that happen because they're both funny. Anyway... Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, it was Norman Bates versus Michael Myers. Myers. <laughs> and Michael Myers won. And Michael Myers beat Pazuzu because Halloween is my favorite horror movie. Well, we know. We know. We know. So those are in my finals. Baba Duke versus Michael Myers. And Michael Myers won. Michael Myers is my final girl. I actually did write in parentheses. Michael Myers is dead, mom. On my, I don't think you can see that, but I actually yeah. did write that. Yeah, nice. Um, Michael Myers, Myers is dead, dead mom. mom. You shot him six times. <laughs> shot him uh, six times. Justina, hit us with your final four. Just the final four. Final four, and then like you know how it turned out. Okay, so I. Baba Duke won in upper left because he's my favorite. I love him so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's a gay icon <laughs> and an ally. And so I feel like that's good. Baba Duke went woke. He did. <laughs> and um lower left. So what are these monsters in the lower left? Yeah, monster category. So those for all two. We actually watched, we like Cliff Notes watched it Friday night, and he's pretty 
scary. A uh, good friend of the show, Lisa, was like, let's look at Nosferatu, but I'll just skip forward. She just kept skipping forward to the scary part. Still scary. And I feel like but that's I, indicative of a good It was actually movie. made it kind of funny to watch it that way because it's a silent film. Yeah. And that I, clip of the dude opening the door and seeing Count Orlock standing there shocked was so funny looking in that um, context. I do really want to see Robert Eggers as the new vampire. I think it's Nosferatu. Ooh. He's got a new movie coming out. It looks up but to get and if you that like Robert Eggers. Would be shoot. awesome. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Must see. And no Nosferatu or Nosy, as I wrote on my bracket <laughs> one the lower left. That nosy bastard. Yeah. <laughs> but going in women's rooms. Feasting him. These like possessed people, like it had to go to Pennywise, period. He's mm. so scary. Mm -hmm. He's period. Pennywise is scary. Um, scary. Also, I agree. Tim Curry. Tim Curry, mm. even though Tim I Curry. really, really liked um the Stars Guard. Stars Stars Guard. Yeah, Stars Guard. Yeah. He's a pirate. And then in the lower right, I gave it to Hannibal Lecter, my boy. Mm. And he, beautiful baby boy. <laughs> he's just my baby boy. And oh, but Pearl. I almost took Pearl all the way, if I'm being honest, but Ooh. just because I love Mia Goth as Pearl. I and you hate eyebrows? Character. Yes. <laughs> yes. I hate eyebrows. And yeah. they're the scariest thing of all. Mm. Now, when you were Mine filling are. out Hannibal Lecter, did you do it with fava beans and a nice Chianti? I did. You better believe. <laughs> I can't you do it. better believe. So ultimately, it was Baba versus Nosy. Gave it to Baba. And it was Pennywise versus... Hannibal Annie. gave it to Pennywise and then I gave it to my boy Baba because well, um uh -huh. yeah because mental health is serious because every every day you look at Jason you're like what is because <laughs> he's screaming at you <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly what is so wrong with you <laughs> great Rob all right well in the top category I went with my favorite director's creation which was The Thing mm. yeah um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, not surprising and, and not a bad yeah name. yeah and bottom left i went with zombies Whoa. and then i too picked pennywise because um he made me piss my pants as a child yep, yep. <laughs> and and then i i had to go with mikey um as much mm -hmm. as i love hannibal lecter day. and as much as yeah mikey specifically day. mikey day is but, the uh, host is, is it cake <laughs> is it cake and, and every time michael meyer stabs someone he's like it's not cake <laughs> 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 but I did. I want as much you know, as much as I love Hannibal Lecter and, and I love Ghostface. I you know mm -hmm. ride or die for the Scream franchise. But yeah, I, I had I had Mikey win that round. But then he lost to Pennywise just because Pennywise is scarier. And then I had zombies beating the thing. And ultimately, I went with zombies. And wow. here's the Whoa. reason: because I thought I really like thought about like what do I consider like truly frightening movies. Twenty eight days later. Yeah, both Dawn of the Dead's yeah. original Night of the Living Dead. I find that the idea of a plague is very scary. Uh, yes. That's why I yes. took 2020 really serious. Uh, I, I, the, the, I, like, I think the first couple seasons of The Walking Dead are un, unpeachable. Like, yeah. they're amazing. I think there's just a lot of great zombie. Like, I really like yeah. when I was really thinking about this. What is a scary vampire movie to you? Like a movie that just like still scares you. Mm, scary uh, but specifically yeah, vampire. a vampire, um, a vampire I, movie the salem's lot that's about to come out on it's not HBO. i watched it i oh. watched it it's not scary for me it's, it's not, twilight it's, it's not good down. yes oh god yeah <laughs> well, twilight yes okay that's, that's, that's what i'm saying i really I, I was racking my brain i was like i don't think i think i think the scariest werewolf movie is easily american werewolf in london yeah right? mm -hmm. obviously like halloween is the scariest of those films i think mm -hmm. like I think of, of the slasher movies, I think Halloween's the scariest. I think yeah. Scream is a close second if you go pound for pound for scare. I think Exorcist is one of the, the scariest movies. If you haven't seen, I, when I, I've seen Repossessed before I saw The Exorcist. I think I've talked mm -hmm. about this before. So The ex, Exorcist didn't work on me. So mm. like I know a lot of people are frightened by that, but I think consistently zombies are scary because... Mm. Yeah. And I don't care if it's fast moving or slow moving. I think zombies are existentially the scariest thing to me. That's and that is why I love zombies. you can't vote for Trump because <laughs> January 6th. Whoa. <laughs> they all look like zombies. So have you seen RBC? Like Wreck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Pretty good. good. Oh, yeah. That one's amazing. And I thought quarantine wasn't a bad reinterpretation of it. Uh, yeah. You know, like. But wreck, yeah, wreck, yeah, R C R. I always thought it's wreck, but I don't. know. I think it's probably called wreck, but yeah, but I that one. There's the oh, the girl with the talents or something, or 
It's got Glenn Close in it. It's a British movie. It's got oh, not Fatal Attraction. No, no, she was that the the the, the bunny did not come back to life. But you know what I mean. There's <laughs> oh, just a lot. I I read that the book. girl I with found, all the talents. I got it. It's, or, yes, yes, I read that book recently. Um, it was really good. I really liked that one. There's just a lot of like, and I've seen a like. I think I, it's a you know a low budget character. To the do. girl with it's, all the gifts. The girl with all the gifts. That was a really good one. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of zombie movies out there that I just yeah. I think it's mm-hmm. consistent. Like I think like like I think of like as a kid, I remember watching Day of the Dead, and there's a scene where like the main character she's looking at a wall and she's having a dream and like all these zombies like punch their arm through the wall and it's horrifying. I don't know. It's just sure you're not talking about thriller. I'm not talking about thriller, <laughs> but there were also zombies in thriller, and that mm-hmm. is why I will not let my son watch the video because he wants to watch it so bad. I'm like. At this point, I'm probably gonna let him. So, How old is he now? Yeah, seven, and like oh. I know we were all that age when we saw it, or you know, little yeah. So it's that's like we yeah. did it in the eighties. That's how we did it in the eighties, you know. So <laughs> watching Day of the Dead in the eighties because yeah. it was on USA, it was like it didn't matter with well, Rhonda Shear. I I respect zombies as a as a winner because I I mean I mm-hmm. could have easily taken it yeah. to the finals, as but I well. could take Ghostface tomorrow. I could take Michael Myers. Right. I mean, yeah. But I just I do Freddy because Cougar. all the stuff you mentioned I do love zombie movies like that's mm-hmm. just, that's why that's what took it as far. You know, as, there's a uh, 28, 28 years later coming out. No way. Mm, yeah, yeah, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, and so I'm like I haven't seen. I just know that's coming out. I'm like stoked about that one. Yeah. I you know what I think was a, actually a scary and bring it back to Josh Hartnett. Thirty Days a Night. I thought that was a pretty good yeah. vampire movie. They that was a good. Scary. That was a that scary. Was a I remember when we saw movie. it, where he was like yeah. turning and yeah, and he's like, "I could smell your blood." Yeah, yeah, like yeah, like that was a pretty good vampire. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like zombies have more a uh, better rate on return of scariness. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, like Dracula is iconic. Yes. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you haven't like really watched those movies. It's more. Then, like... It's more sexual. Yeah. And yeah. I'm very sexually comfortable with being asexual. So yeah, like <laughs> Bella Lugosi is probably actually scarier than the later ones. But yeah. it's been a while since I've seen any of them. Interview of the Vampire. That was a good one. Oh, that yeah. was that was more I mean, it was but like I think about like true sexual. like like true Way blood. More sexual. Yeah, it's more oh, yeah. Like true blood was all like true blood was vampires and scary. Suki. Suki. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't find Ghostface or scream as as scary as you do, Rob. And it's I, but, a lot but, because of what I was saying before about they purposefully had humor. They're commenting I, on everything. I yeah. think yeah. that, and as I've talked about before, like one of my top film experiences was seeing it in the theater. And it was like the first time I'd been in like an R movie, like scary movie like that, where like the crowd was just like, no, no, no. And like everybody was <laughs> reacting <laughs> And yeah. it was just, and I was like, you know, I was like seventh grade, so seventh eighth grade, so it was like it was a perfect time, yeah, for me yeah. to see it, you know. So that's why it just it, like every jump scare got me, and ev- they earned everything in that. Yeah, movie, it's I probably think. got a little bit to do with what was the first or one of the first horror movies you saw, and, it, and like, in that environment too. There's yeah. something about seeing a horror movie in a theater. I think there's scary things. Obviously, I've talked about like I think I told the story about Drag Me to Hell, where like. I watched it, and when I turned the TV off, my dad was just happened to be in the room, and he's like, "Was it scary?" Mm. And it just scared the shit out of me, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, like, like, yeah. He did not mean to do that, but, but, like, yeah, like that. I mean, but for the most part, what I think about when I've been scared the most is probably in the theater, which is weird because you're in a room full of people, right? But I find I've, it, yeah, it, that I think that the communal energy and mm. heightens some of that, regardless yeah. whether it's laughs, whether it's scares, yeah. whether it's whatever. Yeah, but. Yeah, I had friends in college who were like three years behind me, and I it seemed to be that 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 was even enough of an age difference for yeah. Scream to be like their Halloween, like the yeah. way that that I look at Halloween and Jason does. They even though Jason's the same age as these people I'm talking about, mm-hmm. uh, they kind of looked at that Scream in that way and yeah. being scary and 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 their quintessential horror movie. Yeah, I can see that. Well, I find the true horror. And mm-hmm. scary thing mm-hmm. to be wokeism. No, I'm right, kidding. right, 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 right. Everyone right. going woke. Yeah, going woke, woke. mobs. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna make a movie that's like some kind of. I'm like, sure it's been made. Yeah. Like, it's gonna you be know, straight to DVD. Key, yeah. uh, Pete Jordan <laughs> exactly, Peele's gonna probably exactly make a Levi's movie called gonna be Woke. In. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah woke. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of like Get Out is not it's making fun woke. of wokeism, but it is 
talking about like some white liberals like that is kind of like the point of get out why are you looking at me so hard <laughs> <laughs> minnesota uh, i vote well, i would have voted for barack obama a third time <laughs> wow <laughs> there it is we got a couple more days of uh spooky season and i hope everyone does the bracket themselves shares it with us online mm -hmm. and Watch us some spooky movies. Watch some spooky movies. Watch something scary. Watch something scary. Like Fox Complain News. to us that we told you to. You know. <laughs> Don't be afraid to be afraid. Don't be afraid to be afraid. Hey, look, I ain't afraid no ghost. Bustin' <laughs> makes me feel good. <laughs> uh, Ghostbusters shouldn't be women. Oh, Thank you. Thank wow. You. Oh, thank oh, you. <laughs> Justina trying to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. You heard it here first. The woman on this podcast says Ghostbusters shouldn't be women. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Super fun and spooky chat. I hope you had a great time listening to us, and I hope you enjoy your Halloween and get a lot of candy and get one of these great movies and fill out the bracket. You can... Click the link in the bio or go to the website, there it is, pod.com, and search for the blog and click on the horror bracket link that is in that blog and fill it out. Share it with us on social media. You can follow us and share that bracket on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and threads at There It Is Pod and subscribe to our YouTube channel at There It Is. And follow me on Twitter at Jason Farr Jokes and on Instagram and threads at Jason Farr Picks. Also subscribe to our Comedy Lifestyle newsletter. Support us if you can. We have a Patreon and a PayPal. Go to thereitispod.com for newsletter and support info. Links in bio. Until next time, be good to each other. The music for the theme song was created by Neil Brooks. The rap was written and performed by Nick Acevedo. The logo for There It Is was created by Jeff Prater. The There It Is podcast is produced by Jason Farr. Yeah.